can try to record the SMS from now onwards. So that if you miss an SM, or if your body was here but your mind was not, there's something to look back on. Okay? I will make mistakes in my life. So if I say something wrong, yeah, I guess you all could go back in time now and 2.04 you say that consistency takes place at this place, this place. Now come now, you help me tell. So just let me know if I have any errors. It's Monday morning. It's not the best way to start the day. You guys set up? You guys set up? Can we go to many MCQ questions? Question 5? Any more? Then question 5. shows the path taken by electrons and the formation of hydrogen ions. Uh, in the light dependent stages of photosynthesis. Uh, what you're trying to show here is the electron transport chain but in, uh, in, in terms of energy levels. So what are the electrons and hydrogens used to produce? Okay, what are the electrons and hydrogen ions used to produce? Perhaps this trying to make sense. Okay, ATP and ABP is still okay. But let's try to make sense of what we use NADP and NADP is. Okay? When you refer to NADP, I believe you are referring to NAD plus. When you're referring to reduce NADP, if I were to reduce it, to reduce means to uh, for this particular molecule to gain electrons or uh, in the slow may afford you to gain hydrogen ions. So different ways to look at reduction. Right? You either need electrons or hydrogen ions. Then they say you get reduced NADP. So reduce NADP is NADPH. That's what reduce NADP is. So when they say you get NADP from reduced NADP, or maybe let's look at statement B, huh? ATP from ADP. Okay? ATP from ADP. Reduce 
NADP from NADP. Reduce NADP from NADP. So that's what the statement means. Yeah? I got confused myself when I read the reduce NADP part. Yeah? So is that okay? Okay, next question, question five. Okay, question five is quite an interesting question. Essentially, the question is asking you, if I were to rephrase this question, I don't know if you can do it better. If the question just asks you, where is water used in photosynthesis? Or, where is carbon dioxide used in photosynthesis? Would it be easier to do? Because that's what the question is asking. In biology, uh, sometimes when we want to track where a particular molecule is going through the entire cell, we often label it radioactivity. For example, in GH3, remember questions where we radioactively label amino acids, right? Then you can follow the pathway of amino acids. And then the pathway is always the same. You'll see it go through the uh, rough endoplasmic reticulum, then after it goes, you'll start to see a little bit of radioactiveness at the ribosomes and then after it to the um you know suddenly we'll forgot what it's called. Oh, Goji apparatus and then out of the cell. Yeah? So that's what we're trying to do here. We label the water, we label the carbon dioxide. So 18O isotope. So imagine now H2O. The O is the heavier O. It's 18 O. A uh, typical O is 16 O. Okay, this one is the one that is in abundance on Earth. 18 O is heavier than uh, 16 O. So CO2. Right, this CO2, uh, we, the O is made up of 17 O, also heavier than typical O. The C is a 13 C. Typical C is a 12 C. So we are using water and carbon dioxide that is heavier than, uh, than usual. Uh, therefore, now we just try to track this pathway. Where are these molecules used? So where in the chloroplast were the products of photosynthesis containing these isotopes of the form? The products meaning, I would just think back to photosynthesis. Water is used as the, what would we call it? Uh, it is called the electron donor. The idea that it is a donor means that it supplies electrons. Yeah. Okay, let's think about cellular respiration. Oxygen is the final electron acceptor, and then it becomes water. But photosynthesis is kind of the reverse. Water becomes the electron donor, and then oxygen is released. So, and where does that take place? Like, where does photolysis take place? Okay, so it takes place where it's supposed to take place. 84, number one. So it's supposed to take place along the thylakoid membrane. I'm not along the thylakoid membrane, in the thylakoid space. So when you're referring to the thylakoid, this one is referring to the states. Uh, 17 O. This 17 O is part of carbon dioxide. So where does uh, where is carbon dioxide used? It is used in the Kelvin cycle. Kelvin cycle takes place in the stroma. Right? So that's how we know that the 17 O will be used in the stroma. Uh, this entire CO2 will be used in the stroma. Uh, this in the thylakoid states. You want to get a sensing of where all this takes place? Page 78 of your textbook is, uh, gives you a good idea. Yeah? Page 78 of your textbook shows you where everything takes place. Okay, for those that raise the question, is, is this clarified or do we need to go through some more? Okay, which okay? Yeah. Yes. Oh. 
the use of the information is purely to see if you can follow through mentally where this particular molecule will end up. That's all. Yeah. But I could really just ask the question, where is carbon dioxide or where is oxygen is? It is one of those questions like the, the protein, uh, uh, protein synthesis or protein one, where we just ask you, where will this amino acid end up? But you are just asking you, uh, what's the pathway is taking? So there's no significance in real life. We won't, plants won't actually be doing that. Uh, it's just done under experimental conditions. Just to check. It is likely that this was how we found out that this is where carbon dioxide is used. This is where oxygen was used. Okay. okay. So if you look at your MCQs, a common theme with MCQ question is that we're asking you location and products. Same as cellular respiration, location and products. Where is it taking place? What is produced? Okay, always location and product. So in your preparation for your quiz or your revision, I think this would be a good place to anchor everything in. Location, product. You could create a table. You could create a table with all different steps, and then a location and a product. So for example, it could be, let's say your cellular respiration. So I call this is link reaction. Location product. And this one way you can make those. Uh, save on words, uh, just lots of bullet points and you have everything organized neatly. Uh, once you, if you organize it in a way that we tend to ask you, then it's very easy to put information out. Yeah, so location and product. This is uh, one way to go about doing our notes. Personally, I don't do my notes this way. I do my notes how you saw it last week, where I do want uh, everything linked together, and that's how I do my own notes. Yeah, it's kind of like a mind map, but some of you may prefer this one. Okay, uh, table. Next question five. Let's go to the structure questions. The structure questions are not easy. Yeah, they are not easy. Uh, these structure questions, a lot of the questions you can't quite find in your textbook. You need to think a little bit more. You often find that these questions often begin with a suggest. Okay? Suggest. In biology, by now you would notice that there are two kinds of questions. So, for example, state. In a state question, you need to describe, you need to explain, just write down. State the process that results in oxygen being formed. And you will just write photosynthesis, for example, or photolysis. State. And then there are describe questions. In a describe question, we just want you to provide details. We are not necessarily explaining anything, we are just describing. We are describing a process, but there is no explanation. There is no need to link back to any uh, thing that the question is asking, let's say. When we ask you to explain, it often means you need to describe and relate back to question. Okay, when we ask you to explain. Okay, explain questions are the tougher questions. And then the highest level questions are suggest questions. When we ask you to suggest, it means to say that you can't quite find the answer in your textbook. However, you are supposed to use existing knowledge you have to try to answer the question. And therefore, for suggest questions, usually there are quite a number of options. Um, the book is quite open for you to suggest. As long as it makes sense, we are open to accepting the answer. Okay, so suggest questions are the ones that need to think a little bit more. Ah, okay. So the first question is a state question. State the importance of photosynthetic pigment in sustaining life. Okay. State questions are usually regulated. In your face, just want you to say what we are asking you for. Okay, so what's the importance of photosynthetic pigments? Uh, some students are a little bit stumped when you see the word photosynthetic pigments. They are nothing more pigments that can absorb light. Okay? Photosynthetic pigment means 
frequency that can absorb light for photosynthesis. And why not just say chlorophyll? Because there are many kinds of chlorophyll. Uh, just from this table alone, you can see that actually even bacteria, some species of bacteria come with chlorophyll. Their chlorophyll is not quite green. Um, their chlorophyll, some of them come with purple color. The, when you look at leaves, sometimes you see a slight reddish hue. It's also a form of chlorophyll, but just not the green form. So chlorophyll doesn't only come in green color, but there are many other colors. Each one absorbing a different wavelength of light. Uh, as what you've seen over here. Absorption maximum. That means that's the range of light that is uh, best, is ideal that it absorbs. So say the importance of photosynthetic pigments is sustaining light. You want to mention things like, oh, it absorbs light. This light can be used, therefore, for photosynthesis to produce food to sustain light. Yeah? To sustain light. Or you can write it in a more succinct way, would you? Absorb light, energy to make food, starch. Is that how you got an alternative? Uh, oh, fine. Yeah, that's good also. Yeah. Uh, I quite like that the last option gives you produce oxygen. Okay, that's quite important to sustain light also. textbook before uh, is colored in your textbook. The only use of this graph is to help you find out uh, for a particular chlorophyll, what kind of light does it like to absorb. That's the function of such a graph. Then for this graph, if you look at it, we, we call the axis up. It's the x axis, the y axis. The y axis is the uh, axis for absorbance, measuring how much of the light it absorbs. x axis shows the wavelength. So we're trying to find out at each wavelength, how much light does the chlorophyll absorb? Uh, but in this particular case, you can see that this particular bacteria, light is absorbed most at which wavelength of light? Maximally around 850, that range. So the skill to pick up here is to then, therefore, you always provide you then a table of chlorophyll of different wavelengths. And then the skill is really just to find out which chlorophyll is likely present in this particular organism. Yeah? I could very well swap out this graph with that of one of a plant. And I provide you the same table. And then I ask you to find out which chlorophyll do you think is pre presence, uh, present in abundance in this particular plant. Right? So the skill is really to match and find out which chlorophyll is present. And therefore, we look at the table above. Which chlorophyll is likely present? In large amounts. Here you be black, a graph. Bacterial chlorophyll A. Okay, that is the range where the light is maximally absorbed. Oops, but that's not the question. The question is C, right? It is C, so I skip. Suggest and explain where the light harvesting complex can be found in purple bacteria. So suggest. Suggest is a difficult question. Uh, some of you may have already seen the answer. Yeah. So suggest where. Okay, so here's the logic that you will go through to find out where. Okay. Number one, let's think up. Uh, uh, in, a, in a plant, we will expect to find all these proteins embedded on the membrane of the thylakoid. Right? That's a chloroplast. If you want to think of other proteins that are important for electron transport chain, you may expect to find it maybe on the inner membrane of mitochondria. Right, so two places. Now the question is, bacteria. Does bacteria come with mitochondria? Does it have chloroplasts? So actually bacteria, we don't find them with chloroplasts or mitochondria. Uh, instead, 
you can expect to find. Okay, but then let's go back up. Uh, if you can recall in your lower GH when we talk about prokaryotes, one unique thing about prokaryotes is that they do not have membrane bound organelles. The only membrane you would find is in cell membrane. Bacteria also come to cell wall. Yeah. Bacteria also come to cell wall. Except they don't have any membrane bound organelles and we typically find proteins that matter on the membrane. Actually the only place you can find it is on the cell membrane of the bacteria itself. And that's where you would find it. You'll find the protein there increase in the necessary proteins that require the electro transport change on the membrane of the bacteria itself. And so, I don't know if you can recall, uh, long, long time ago in GH3, on top of your textbook of cells, they mentioned the endosymbiotic theory. Yeah. Now there's this theory that the mitochondria, the chloroplasts that we have in our animal cells, they came from free roaming bacterial cells that exist all the time ago. Yeah, so that's the running theory. Um, what supports that theory? Number one, look, bacteria can very well survive by themselves. They have all the necessary uh, things that will form the electron transport chain on their own cell membrane. They don't need anything else. Actually, if you look in the chloroplast and, and mitochondria, what other clue that suggests that they may have existed by themselves a long time ago is that you look at mitochondria, we know they come with their own DNA. Yeah. Chloroplasts also come with their own DNA. So that also supports the theory that we used to survive outside of cells, and it is our big animal cells that are lazy, not produce own food, not produce our own ATP, are just follow, and then solar up the Lots of them in there. Yeah. So that's the running theory. Uh, but it's symbiotic, that means we help each other out. Yeah, we help each other out. I felt a big presence walk past. Who was it? Who? Mr. Who? Mr. Teo. Who's Mr. Teo? Oh, Mr. Teo, do it. Hey, do you all do the... I cannot remember what he answered to do last week. Now he was standing there, then he was telling us that you all better go and... What? Oh, have you all done your iPod thing? Got permission from your parents? Yeah. Okay. Yeah? You don't know? Uh, you know, then we must port everything over to iPod in classroom. Okay. Yeah. Suggest and explain. Yeah, so this particular question is very tough. A lot of suggest questions. Okay, but usually for uh, for exams, we you'll find that there's a we build up. We always start off with a state, then a describe, then a explain, and then the last one is suggest. Yeah? So that's usually a gradual build up. Suggest and explain the advantage of synthesizing photosynthetic pigments different from chlorophyll. So what are some suggestions? Okay, any interesting suggestions from the ground? Maybe things yet? If they work at different ways, that just competition is in the Okay, uh, what different wavelengths, then less competition at the same wavelength. Possible? Possible? Any others? Okay, uh, deep sea. So what about deep sea? I know the answer mentioned deep sea somewhere. So what, how will you expand on that? Okay, Kira says only a certain wavelength can reach the bottom of the sea. So perhaps having a different power of field can help you absorb that possible uh, Possible? Look, you find it interesting. Therefore, the color of plants we see, right, is a result of what they do not absorb, right? So, imagine on a distant planet, this particular plant is absorbing light on a different wavelength. Can see the plants will look a different color. So if you want a plant that looks blue, right? Then the chlorophyll needs to absorb everything but that. Is it possible? Yes, possible. 
which of him first up uh, in the history of evolution? The green plants or the purple bacteria? Actually, the purple bacteria came first. So before green plants, there were purple bacteria. Yeah. So it, it's likely that the green plants adapted so that it doesn't need to compete with the purple bacteria other than the other. next question is a question that you can expect to see every time we talk about cellular respiration of photosynthesis. How often or not? Yeah. They state the role of proteins. Again, you see always begin in some sort of order. Okay, state. State the role of proteins. Uh, you may have phrased it in a different way. Here it is wrote electron carrier. Do you have any other suggestions? So explain the impact of photosynthesis if protein Q is inactivated. So uh, you see, if you want to prepare yourself, always you just write yourself your mind too. If I inactivate this, what happens? If I inactivate that, what will happen? Actually, the outcome is always the same. Then, you just cannot say I've forgotten and so on and so forth. However, in the case of photosynthesis, there are a little bit more you can talk about. You could mention the idea that uh, electrons won't be able to replenish whatever is lost in the particular photosystem. Okay? Because the light excites Let's say this photosystem one, the light will excite the electrons, right? And then we pass on the, the chain. 
However, we need to replenish. We need to replenish the electron that was lost from another photosystem. So that's one additional point I think you can add for this particular question. Uh, from part, electrons cannot be transported to photosystem one to replenish the lost electron. There's something that's different. Everything else is the same. We cannot set up photon gradient. Uh, H plus ions cannot accumulate. Electron transport chain cannot uh, continue to function. Uh, you will mention some of the products that are not for or accumulate. Okay. So in this case, NADPH cannot be formed due to lack of electrons for reduction of NADP. Still okay. The subsequent points are points that you also use inside your cellular respiration question. Electron transport chain fail. Cannot form proton gradient. No proton gradient if piece in case cannot function. No ADP. Last one. If there's no NADPH, no ADP, your Kelvin cycle cannot function and then you cannot produce uh, the glucose that you want. Personally, I find photosynthesis easier only because there are two locations we are looking at. Thylakoid space and the stroma. Right, but then for cellular respiration, there are, there are also two locations, but you have four different steps to think of. Yeah? So I find this a little bit easier for me. Lah. There are only two places for work. Yes. Uh, why does the field electron transport chain reduce proton gradient? Oh, say again. Why does a? Uh, the field electron transport chain reduce field which reduce proton gradient. Oh, why does it reduce proton gradient? Yeah. So at least you are thinking that it should not reduce the proton gradient. Right, Q cannot function, right? Yeah. Okay. So if Q cannot function, let's say this is Q. Okay. If, um, all these proteins can only function if they can receive electrons and pass it on. Right? So if Q ceases to function, okay, so let's say uh, we still have a little bit of electrons. Huh? The electrons photolysis, pass on, yeah? pass on the chain, pass on the chain. I don't pass here, but I cannot. So maybe it gets stuck here. Lah. Yeah? Um, okay. So granted, if we manage to pass electrons through this particular protein, so it's still possible to pass some protons across. Possible? Possible. Let's say another molecule of H2O. We place electrons here, pass to here. I want to pass to here, but it's filled. So it will be stuck here. So in a sense, it's a conveyor belt. I stop one part of the conveyor belt. Other parts will start to fill up, fill up, fill up electrons. I cannot send new electrons. So that's that's why we say the electron transport chain eventually stops functioning. Because it kind of clogs up, you know. But how, but how does that um, how does that link to the chemical Not accumulating, is it? Because you see proton gradient. Hmm. So how does that involve the like If electrons are no longer passed through, there's no energy released for us to be able to pump in H plus in a certain direction anymore. I need electrons to pass, then I can have the energy to pump hydrogen ions across. If they don't go through, and electrons just stay put, right, there will be no longer any release of energy for me to pump hydrogen ions across. Yes. Ah, okay. So I, I'm sorry. Say again. It, but then one could argue. People may argue that okay, this particular protein over here, maybe I still manage to pump a little bit of protons. Maybe one or two. Ah, okay. Then another, uh, another thing to take note right, is that remember, I think somebody brought this question up last week. When we look at the thylakoid membrane, or let's say the inner membrane of the mitochondria, do you expect to only find one electron transport chain? 
ที่หนวดอยู่ใกล้มิลเลียนถึงมิลเลียนสำเร็จการสังเกตซึ่งฉันไลค์ที่เดี๋ยวรู้นี่แหละวันในดิจิทัลออนมันสิ่งที่ค่อยอัพยูแต่ดังนั้นเราเรียกว่ารีดิวส์ฟูตองเรเดียนส์ฟอร์เพราะมันสามารถพัฒนาดิจิทัลออนเ
getting so well, you're not, the idea of it is not to prevent first thing. It is so that we can create a cell that is legit. A cell that really push against it, right? It's basically quite solid. That's, it. That's really its function. Uh, prevent it from bursting. Also not quite. Then you might as well say another congestion cell wall. But by doesn't need water. Ah, okay, I find it all. I personally find it odd because the cell walls function is not so much to prevent bursting. Structure. It gives structure rather than it prevents birth. So if you replace, you say cell wall is for structure so that it can remain uh, firm and then all the uh, problems can then fall behind the edges and also. Okay, this last question seems tough, but actually we're just asking you about the electron transport chain. Describe one, describe the role of the thylakoid membrane in photosynthesis. If you didn't know how to do this question, then the only other train of thought you would go down would be thylakoid membrane. What's present on the thylakoid membrane? The electron transport chain. So therefore, describe the role of the electron transport chain in photosynthesis. That's how I would think. Yeah? Okay, but I think maybe that you have left out something along the lines of thylakoid membrane also increase surface area more proteins to be embedded. Okay, there are many, many, many of them. Okay, thylakoid membrane. Each one forming a random thylakoid to increase surface area. Okay, the subsequent points not pull out of the blue. You can, in fact, plug and play points three onwards for a question on cellular respiration, mitochondria. question you can ask yourself to link everything together. Cellular respiration for this question. The ultimate question you can ask yourself. Oh, yeah, I said before compare and contrast, yeah? Okay. Compare and contrast cellular respiration for this question. That's very high level one, you know. If you can not, actually you are linking everything together, you are tying everything together. Published from 403, gave a question. He said, right, okay, uh, what, uh, maybe you can describe to yourself how a plant cell is able to produce its own food for cellular respiration. Right? 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 Oh, <laughs> right an essay. Yeah? Write an essay to explain how a plant cell can produce its own food for cellular respiration. Wow. Possible? Mm, possible. <laughs> that would be great. We actually use that. But that one all is too much really. I cannot even give you 12 marks. That's too little. I should give like 24 marks. Yeah. But it's a good revision question. Right? Next time you go and ask your friend. Yeah? Uh, you could say so. Because the reaction center, the chlorophyll that's lost, it can be replaced. So in a sense, it can be electron carrier. Yeah. Or acceptor. Yeah. Carrier acceptor actually kind of they're kind of the same thing. Yeah. It's just that, that whether it's an intermediary acceptor or final electron acceptor. I don't know what the last question is. Ah, describe how carbon dioxide is fixed in the stroma. You want to mention the enzyme rubisco. And then the next thing I was mentioning, I think, I think you can leave out. Ah. Then you say to form two molecules of three possible glycerate. They are not required to know 3 phosphor as a product. Okay, so you can Yes. Okay, what is carbon fixation? Carbon fixation means I fix carbon on uh, no, it does not. So 
carbon fixation is purely I fix the carbon onto the molecule. Are you pushing so? Yeah. Okay, so carbon fixation, if you look in your textbook on page 79, it is purely the part where we put the carbon on. In other words, carbon fixation is just the process of fixing carbon onto something else. Yeah. But it's a very important step. You think about it, plants are able to use carbon that's floating around the air, put it into and make it solid. You know? yeah, we can use it as a source of food. I think that's really amazing. Yeah. From air to food. Wait, have you all solved the question? So remember, if you think about it, the electron transport chain on the final point membrane, the products are ATP and NADPH. No, but the final point membrane of the chloroplast can produce ATP. Yet, it is channeling it to produce glucose. The plants also have mitochondria, right? And then the glucose is then channeled in the mitochondria to produce ATP. So the, yeah, so the question is, right, why are plants doing this? Why doesn't it just stop here? Right? Just stop here. I just produce my own ATP from sunlight, right? Electron transport. Just stop there, right? But why am I producing glucose? Yeah? Yeah, everyone go and think. Okay, Rachel, white box. Yeah. Wait, you said. No, I ain't. That's not what I'm asking, man. Fine. Genius. Who else said false? False, falses. Falses. Okay, go here. Why are you false? So he says there are two parts of photosynthesis. So? Yeah. And then the other? Okay. Yeah. Then for those that say yes, you can only 
No, no, my question is yeah. So, uh, Jack, were you the yes sir? Okay, so can only take place at the side. Okay, so what's your stand? Kind of thing. 
one of you could be doing food test, another one could be doing uh, microscopy, and after your swap. Yeah, it's like that. Okay, so graph drawing. Okay, for graph drawing, number one, you need to have a title. You give it or not, you give one mark for title. Also to know why. I right, ask the chemist like chemistry, I think they don't even give marks if you draw a nice table. Uh, it's like a given. But we give marks for that. Okay, so title. What goes in a good title? Make sure your title comes with units inside. Okay, no units is also not contact with the title. And then you need to underline. Okay, units and underline. Right, these two things. Next, on axis. Make sure you label your axis. Your axis also needs to come with units when you label. Extrapolate. The background will be one. 
that goes beyond the data that's provided. So you go, you extend a little bit more, you extend a little bit more. Okay, do not extrapolate. This is a no-no. How do you know if it's a curve or a straight line? If you draw a straight line and you have points that are super far off away from it, it cannot be a straight line anymore. Then you go for a curve. Do a, does a curve need to look like that? Can it like go in S shape? Possible. Okay, curves do not need to look like that. This what? This is an exponential curve. A logar logarithmic curve. Okay, need not be a logarithmic curve. Okay? Hey, S shape also logarithmic, right? What? So what curve is that? Sine curve. Okay. So it, <laughs> okay, so it can be any other curve. Can you connect the dots? So actually, I think I've told you before, in the both side, we found out that when the students connect the dots, they weren't faulted for it. Okay? Use that as a last result, okay? Then usually when we, when we design a graph, we provide the data that allows you to draw either a curve or a straight line. Usually there's no need to connect the dots. Okay? But actually, it is not wrong per se. Okay? So use that as a last result. So actually, you can get one, two, three, four. You don't know how to draw the graph, Okay, it's not the end of the world. Okay? These four I actually feel is very easy to accomplish. How do you find the rate? Okay, let's say you're asked to find the rate. To find the rate, and I don't know if you learned this before in math, you have to use a tangent. So let's say I want to find the rate at this particular point over here. How to find the rate? You draw a tangent line. Then let's say you choose a data point over here, and somewhere along the line also. So you have y1, x1. Okay, no, no, no. Okay, right. your math, huh? Okay, so then how we find the, the rate? You take. <laughs> Okay, so this will be the data. Okay, essentially, you're taking the y-axis, my bad was, that are against the x-axis. So sometimes x-axis is high, and this one is, I don't know, number or division or something. Yeah. So this is how you find the rate. You, you use a tangent line. Actually, can you, I don't know, is there a math way to do it? Like what, dy, dx, and can you get a rate? Or must you, you need some additional information? You need a function of the curve. Oh, you need a function of the curve. Okay, that's fine. So you have a function of the curve, actually you don't need to draw a tangent line as this. Okay, so these are some of the skills you need for graph drawing. The previous practical, the skill to pick up is drawing. Yeah, this one is graph drawing. Will you encounter these in your practical? Okay. By the way, we are entering the last chapter for media. Nothing else really. Okay. It's so long. We will likely stop at mitosis and not my or we won't go on to meiosis. Okay? So that means your mid years will stop at mitosis. Yeah. You find the page of mitosis, then you stop there. You can give a quote. Okay, so where's mitosis?
你的 sales cycle。It's a red cloud. I think it's an amphibian. Okay, I want to start the topic by watching this video. I spliced together several videos from the internet, but I think what you're about to see is quite beautiful. It may have come quite a bit weird, but then the later part is oh, more amazing. But uh, whatever we're going to study will help us make sense of what we're going to watch in a while.
of alpha lama to spermates, to spermates come together, then you get a new being. Uh, in the topic of cell cycle, we're going to explore how the cell divides. First, cell division is a very important part of a life cycle. Uh, when a cell divides, it gives more cells. More cells you can use to make an, an entire organism as you just watched over there. And when cells divide, this is also the process we use to produce new sex cells that can be then used to fertilize each other. So we're going to begin or introduce a little bit of the topic of cell cycle. to page 84 of your textbook, it gives you a very brief idea of uh, the entire cell cycle. Right? There was a joke. Alright, now I get my full world. <laughs> oh my god. Are there male or female cells? Actually, uh, if you look at the DNA level, yeah. But it's not like a male cell would come with a Okay, to appreciate the cell cycle, okay, what we're going to study for this particular chapter, we're going to look at the different parts of a cell's life cycle. Right, what you just saw just now in the video was the life cycle of the entire organism. But cells go through a cycle of their own. They can divide or reproduce, right? The idea of reproduction is to divide, they will die and eventually when it reaches their end of their life, their lifespan. Uh, if we look at the entire uh, cell cycle of a cell, Page 84 gives you an idea of the various phases. For us, right, for the chapters and weeks ahead, we're going to focus on a few parts of the cell cycle. Okay? Okay, just broadly, if you look at the cell cycle, there are several phases. There's G1, S, G2, and then there's mitosis, and then there's cytokinesis. When we look at G1 and G2, the G stands for growth. Right? There's a phase that the cell goes through that grows. Produces more organelles, uh, yeah. Produces more organelles for itself, more cytoplasm. It grows in size. That's the growth phase. So there are two growth phases that a cell typically goes through for its life cycle. Okay. And then there's the S phase. The S phase is an important phase that we're going to spend a lot of time in. The S phase. Phase is the phase where, in our next lesson, we're going to dive straight into S stands for synthesis. And in this phase, is where new DNA is synthesized. Remember last year, we spent a lot of time talking about how proteins are synthesized? Yeah, that was like the bulk of last year, right? Uh, this year, the S phase of the cell cycle is where the DNA is replicated. 
The idea of replicate is to make double. And we make more DNA in this particular phase, the S phase. It is just a throw up. So why does the cell need to go through all this? Why is it growing in size? Why is it producing double the amount of DNA it has? Why is it growing some more? Well, because cells divide. Imagine if I just divide and divide and divide without producing more things internally. It will become smaller and smaller and smaller and smaller and smaller. Right? Each packet of cell will have less and less DNA, less and less organelles, less and less cells. That's why it spends half of its time growing and dividing. Later on in the chapter, we'll go into this part called mitosis. Mitosis is the part where the cell starts to divide into two. Right? Um, we are expected to know what are the various stages of mitosis. I like this part of the chapter, it's very visual. Uh, it's more visual than anything else. Okay? And very often we just want you to be able to identify the various stages. So, for the next one and a half weeks, we're going to spend a lot of time in the test phase. We're just going to find out how DNA is replicated. Because without DNA, we, we are lacking the brain of the cell. Okay? And that's the uh, first part we're going to spend a lot of time in. So what do you know, need to know for this particular chapter, uh, page of page 84, just broadly, the, the life cycle of the cell. Right? And to highlight S phase and mitosis and cytokinesis. That's the bulk of the time we're going to spend. We're actually not going to spend time at all talking about G1 and G2. Just know that that's when the cell grows produce more cytoplasm, more organelles, so that when I divide, it will become smaller. Okay? So if you want to prepare yourself for the next lesson, actually, other than reading up, I suggest you go and read up and refresh yourself on the structure of DNA. Then this chapter will have a lot more meaning. Okay? Right, and that's all for today. Yes. Jamie, I thought we stop the recording.